trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the same on earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called to yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder. Bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his children will shall gather to their home beyond the sky and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road Call up yonder when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to the setting sun. Let us talk of all the wonders of love and care. And when all of life is over and their work on earth is done, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road Oh, precious fountain. 
mountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and he keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. For oh, there to my heart was a butterfly. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Yes, I for so let the same. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name, oh, glory to his name. Glory to his name, oh, there to my heart was a blood of life. Would you stand with us, please? Go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> please remember that we have a, uh, an ongoing list on your bulletin every Sunday. And you can take that home and pray for those folks. In addition to that, we want to pray for Tammy Green and, and uh, Duran Stapleton. All of these folks need to uh, be touched by the Lord. How many of you have a need you'd like to raise your hand tonight and indicate a need. God is our source. God is our source. Amen. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your many blessings in our lives. You've kept us, brought us again to your house, Lord, and I'm so grateful. Pray, God, that you would come in a powerful way and touch lives. All of those, oh God, who we pray for each week, I pray, God, that you would touch them and lift them up, pour out of your spirit in great, great measure. Lord, these two that we've listed tonight, I ask you, God, you would come in a powerful way and touch their lives. Do a great work. Hands raised all over this room tonight indicate that there are people who in need tonight, and I ask you, God, you would come in a great way. Pour out of your spirit in each life and each home. Bless our pastor tonight as he ministers. Help us tonight to receive great things from you. In Jesus' name, amen.
within my heart. How big is God? How big and wide is vast domain to try to tell? just praise and bless and honor you, almighty God. For Lord, you are the great one, O God, the Alpha and the Omega. My God, my Lord, and my soon coming King. And Lord, we give you all the preeminence. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We lift you up above all the circumstance, all the situations, all the trials and all the tests. You're greater, almighty God. And Lord, we just praise you, Lord. We bless you and honor you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. For, Lord, you, O oh God, have been faithful, Lord Jesus. You've been faithful, Lord, and we just worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. the Lord. We're going to take our text tonight from Psalms 13 and chapter 1. Psalms 13, chapter 1, and then we'll go to Psalms 89 and 46. Psalms 13 and 1 says, How long wilt thou forget me? 
O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Then Psalms 89 and 46 says, How long, Lord, wilt thou hide thyself forever? Amen. I want to minister uh, this evening on the subject, When God is Silent. When God is Silent. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to minister your precious word. Lord, we pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, with your anointing. I pray, God, that that holy anointing would fall upon the messenger, Lord, that I could speak your word with boldness. Lord, that this word would go forth and minister to every heart and every life that is assembled here tonight. Lord, I pray, God, that your perfect will will be accomplished, Lord, here as we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated here this evening. I want to remind you of the uh, WM's outing uh, to see uh, comedian Shonda Pierce is this Saturday, October the 22nd. The van will leave the church at 2.30. Those of you that have signed up to go and have gotten your tickets, uh, the van will leave at 2.30. Also, Women of Humility meeting Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, also, Pastor Appreciation Day is set aside for this Sunday, this coming Sunday. Uh, we will be honoring our staff and, and uh, the, those that God have placed in, in position here to lead our church. And so we'll be honoring those. Uh, and we'll have a uh, potluck meal after the a.m. service. And then uh, after the p.m. service, we'll be dismissed. So be sure and bring lots of pinto beans and cornbread for Sunday, okay? Amen. Pastor likes pinto beans. Had me some today. Today, amen. As already. Uh, also, the uh, prime timers are going on outing next Saturday, October the 29th, going to Benton to uh, eat my catfish and then also to the flea, uh, flea market there. And uh, the van or the bus will leave at 930 there's a sign-up sheet in the back if you would like to, uh, to go with us at Ride the Band. Any question, you can see uh, Sister Jimmy. The CWA's Friday night, uh, family night, will be at Larry's Pizza uh, this coming Tuesday night, October the 25th, and they'll be meeting there at 6 o'clock. Meeting there at 6 o'clock. Also, because we care, are taking up donations for the Thanksgiving box of love. There's a list at the back table on the items that, uh, that they need in each box. And so if you would like to help us in that area, be sure and get a list and fill up a box and bring it to us. All of those uh, donations are, uh, need to be here by Saturday, November the 12th. Saturday, November the 12th. The twelfth. Well, glory. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I'm glad to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. I, uh, we got the twins back in town. They've been on a little missionary journey, and uh, we got uh, them back in town. And so I, I had a good cooked meal today. Amen. I didn't have to go to Randy's or McDonald's or anywhere. I, I got to eat at home today. But I, I appreciate those twins, and uh, I really appreciate one of them. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I asked Linda to, this afternoon, I said, uh, look, I said, Linda, are you going home? She said, why? You want me to? <laughs> I said, no, I, yeah, not necessarily, you know. But um, anyway, I like it when she comes to my house because she just works. She's just a worker, yeah. She just does all kinds of stuff around the house. If I could just get her to mow the yard and pick up the yard and rake leaves and all that, it'd be all right. But but anyway, let me read this psalm again to you. Psalms 13 and 1. How long will thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How many has ever, ever, ever been through a span in your life that you just felt like that God was silent? 
Amen. God had blessed you and he had, he had given you directions. He had, he had given you instructions. But it just seemed like all of a sudden you went for a while and you heard nothing from God. It just, you know, the promise and the, and the vision and the dreams, it tarried. And, and, and God just seemed to be silent. That's, that's happened in my life. I had received the instruction from the Lord. He gave me direction for my life, revealed his will for my ministry and these times were amazing. They're a powerful uh, to realize that the great God of this universe, as, as Pastor Roger sang this uh, just a few minutes ago, big enough to uh, create the universe, yet small enough, amen, to minister and to live into our hearts. But it was an awesome time because we realized that this great God that created all things also loves us so much that he has planned our lives and ordered our steps and given us direction for our lives. Amen. But then as we start trekking out the journey, leaving uh, point A and heading toward point B, then sometimes you got to spend some time in the hallway. Sometimes you are in the midst of that journey and you, you don't hear God's voice any longer. Amen. He told you, it may have been a year or two ago, how that God is going to bring you just like he told me. He told me uh, several years before I came to Malvern as a pastor that he was sending me to Malvern. But from that point to then, Hey, there was a long trek there, amen, and I had to keep uh, my focus. I had to keep uh, faithful to the Lord, and I had to do some work to prepare for uh, this moment and this ministry. But, but, but what happens or, or there's times in our lives that it just seems like God is silent, amen, and we are not to uh, forget God, we're not to grow weary in well-doing, but we have to keep our trust and our confidence in the Lord. Oh, we remember that Jesus felt the silence of God as he hang on the cross of Calvary. We know that Jesus was doing the will of the Father. He was in the place of God's calling. He was headed to his destiny, his purpose, was being fulfilled, but there was a time of silence and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. How many has ever felt like the Lord's forsaken you? You've felt like that you felt all alone. I, I think about Job who was faced with the tragedy of losing everything that he owned, his children, his health, and everything he had. And for 37 chapters of the book of Job, God is silent. He's left with, with the agony of, of bulls and bad friends. But the hardest part of all was God was silent during that time. We're not sure the duration of time for Job's suffering, but we're sure of his per perseverance, of his patience, his faithfulness, and his trust in the Lord. Job never one time faltered. He never one time sinned. He never one time did he curse God. But God kept, amen, or Job kept his trust in the Lord. You see, God's silence in the case of Job was a sign of trust. It was a sign of trust. He trusted Job so much that he allowed this test to come upon his life and he didn't speak to him. He just kept silent because he trusted Job. He knew what Job would do and Job, amen, uh, kept his faith in the Lord. God had his confidence in Job. Job was God's poster child of faithfulness. God knew Job wouldn't, wouldn't sin and turn his back on him. But God's silence was to prove that Job could be trusted. Amen. So times in our lives that we go for a span, that we don't hear the voice of God or we don't hear any new instructions or we don't hear anything from the Lord, it's because He trusts in you and because He knows that, that you are working and striving toward the, the call and the place that God has for your life. And so He allows you to be proven as you keep your faith uh, commitment and your uh, focus on the Lord. And when God broke his silence in Job's life, he rewarded Job, Job, uh, Job and reprimanded his un, 
uh, support of friends, and God blessed Job in a way that brought shame to all that, uh, of his doubters, the, all that doubted Job. So if God is silent, it could be a sign of his trust and his confidence in you that you'll not fail and that he's proving, proving you for the next season. How many knows in life we have a lot of different seasons? We have a lot of different times, a lot of different stages of life that we go in. I've heard it said that when God is silent and you don't know what to do, then just keep doing what he told you before. Amen. Just stay faithful what he's given you to do. I've heard, heard of some people say, amen, as they were teaching the class or Sunday school class, they, they were, had a desire to do something else, but uh, they would come to me and they would, they would want to do something uh, a little different. But I would tell them, I say, you stay committed to what God has given you to do. You show commitment. You show steadfastness. You be uh, uh, faithful to what God has given you, and then God in His time will open a new door or open a new path for you, amen, in your life. And so we are to stay committed and faithful so that he can trust us with the small things before we are added or, or, uh, or move above or uh, any farther, amen. It could be that he, uh, that he and you, that he knows that you're not going to quit, but he is proving you and he is making sure that you are ready for that next season. And sometimes God is, is waiting on us. Sometimes he waits on us. Hebrews 11 and 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he com uh, condemned the world and became uh, heir of the righteousness which is by faith. You see, Noah received instruction from God. He worked for almost a hundred years uh, building the ark. And when the ark was completed, then God spoke again. Amen. For a hundred years, Noah worked on that ark. He constructed and he, he fulfilled the will of the Lord. Amen. So, uh, so God could be waiting on us to finish the stage or the season that we are in right now so that God can carry us to the next stage of life. So be faithful to what you've been given because God may be waiting on you to finish this phase. Amen. Because God wants to promote you. God's promises, His promises, the dreams and the visions that God gives us, they're always for an appointed time. They're for an appointed time. And everything God does, there's a time and then there is a season. You see, God has to mentor us. He has to mold us. He has to prove us. He has to teach us. He has to prepare us for the next step in our lives. In our physical lives, we know there are stages of growth, times of learning, maturing, and coming of age. We learn to walk. We learn to talk, and hopefully we learn to behave. We learn responsibility and gain common sense. And we know that at the age of 15, I, I've got a granddaughter that just come of age of 15, and I think the next day after her birthday, she went and got her uh, driver's permit. Amen. She went and got her driver's permit. But see, she still had to wait another year before she can drive alone. So see, there's times, there's appointments, there's stages, and there are things that we have to go through in our maturing in life, getting ready for the next phase and the next stage. And sometimes God, amen, as he has given us the blessing, he's given us the promise, he's given us the dreams and the visions, then he just lets us go, amen, and, and to prove us that we will be faithful to him. Now, God may be silent because it's not time yet. Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. How many has heard those words, wait for it? Wait for it. Amen. How many has, has watched videos or you've seen things on social media and they always have the caption up there and says, wait for it. 
wait for it. Amen. And so what they're saying is don't get bored at the very beginning of it, but wait because there's going to be a punchline coming. There's going to be something that they want you to see in that time. Amen. That punchline is coming. And we're sure to be patient and watch for it and wait for it and look for the punchline. I've heard my wife a few times as she is reading a book. I've seen her over there. She loves to read. And I've seen her, she'd be reading a book and, and she'd lay the book down just almost with disgust. She'd say, this book is slow. I'm telling you, it's just slow. And what she means is she hadn't got to the punchline yet. And it just, it just seems like the book's going on and on and on and there's no point to what uh, they're carrying you to. But if you'll stay committed and stay in there, amen, sooner or later you're going to get to the punchline. You're going to get to the point. Well, Habakkuk said for the vision or uh, for we're to wait uh, on this vision, or you could say the dream or the promise, we are to wait because for the appointed time, and we are to wait for it because God will bring it in His timing. In the case of Joseph, we know that God gave him a dream, and one day his family would bow to him. But he didn't tell him about the pit. He didn't tell him about the liars. He didn't tell him about the prison. But he only told him about those family members that would bow to him one day. Amen. But so, so he remained faithful. Joseph remained committed. And he remained sinless. Amen. And the same with Job. Amen. Job gave his, uh, he gave all of the temptation to blame God. He gave it away. So Joseph and Job stayed committed and stayed faithful. And Joshua, uh, Joseph found himself in the palace. Job found himself with double for his trouble. And Jesus too endured it all and finished his purpose and his place to bring salvation to you and to me. Amen. Oh, and sometimes there's silence because there is resistance. There's resistance. Daniel 10 and 12 says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. You see, as soon as Daniel prayed and sought the Lord and cried out to God, an angel of the Lord was dispatched uh, uh, to bring the answer for Daniel and his prayer. But there was a hindrance. There was a hindrance. Daniel... Uh, uh, 10 and 13, verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Uh, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. You see, sometimes there's a hindrance there in the heavenlies. Amen. Listen, we must realize as real as uh, humanity is, as real as you and I are, there is a spiritual realm. There is a, a spiritual world, and the enemy is uh, it goes to and for, forth, seeking whom he may devour. And if there's anything that he can do to hinder your blessing, hinder your healing, hinder your provision, hinder your spiritual life, then he will do what he can to try to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to rob your confidence. He wants to get you to lose your focus and distract you and get your eyes off the prize of the Lord. Amen. But if we stay committed, as we stay faithful, to, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ, then in due time, in due season, God will begin to speak and the blessing and the provision and the dream, amen, will come forth. Hallelujah. Oh, sometimes we, we hinder this, uh, this hindrance is there, amen, but sometimes the hindrance could be us. Sometimes we could be the ones that are hindering. Today we have a lot of voices out there, a lot of voices on television, on computers, iPads, and telephones. And then there's your neighbor that knows it all. <laughs> How many's got one of them? Don't, don't raise your hand. Amen. There's lots of hindrances. 
There's lots of voices that will try to distract you. The enemy can use those voices to distract you and get you to lose your focus. Oh, Paul, he said, my face is set like a flint toward the prize of the high calling of God. He didn't allow the enemy to destroy or to, or to hinder his focus in the Lord. But he knew what God had spoken to him. You think about Paul. Oh, Paul on the road to Damascus, amen. He received a revelation of who Jesus Christ was. And so from that point on, amen, as he had received that revelation of who Jesus was. It was his desire amen to fight hell. Oh listen Paul he went through a lot of, of chastisement a lot of struggles a lot of persecution but he kept his face set like a flint toward the prize glory to God. He kept serving the Lord with faithfulness with commitment amen and he amen finished his course glory to God for the kingdom of God. Oh, Paul said in Philippians 4 and 8, amen, in these times to keep our focus, he said, finally, my brother, uh, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Hallelujah. Listen, when the enemy comes to disrupt your thought life, when it comes to bring that temptation, the Bible said we can bring into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. We've got the power to pull down the strongholds. We've got the power to come against the principalities and the powers and the wickedness of the enemy. The Lord has given us power over all the power of the enemy, all the power of the enemy. You have more power in your little finger than the enemy has, glory to God, because you've got all of heaven to your disposal. Amen. You've got the authority and the power to call upon the precious name of Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, if God dispatched an angel to answer the prayer of Daniel the moment that he prayed, I believe God hears and answers our prayers as well. And God sends. Amen. As we know that Jacob saw a ladder that went up into the heavens and there were angels ascending and angels descending. There were those that were carrying our prayers to the throne room of grace and then there were those, Brother Calvin, that were bringing the answer back to us and that's real today. God is still faithful. Glory to God. I want you to know that if you're in a moment and in a time of your life and you feel like the heavens are as brass or you feel like your prayers are not getting any higher than the ceiling, well, I've got good news for you. Glory to God because the Lord, our Savior, is living right here. Glory to God. He's in you. You are in Him. And glory, we are in the Father. Hallelujah. Would you give Him praise here tonight? Hallelujah. So keep your heart and mind in tune with the Spirit. Meditate on God's Word. Spend time in prayer. And don't do the talking, but wait and listen for a while. That's a lot of the t reason we feel like God uh, has grown silent is because we do all the talking. We do all the talking. We, a lot of times we'll get in our prayer closet and we, we got a list. God, I need this. I need that. I need this and I want this and I want that. Amen. It's kind of like you, you have just uh, opened up a genie and it came out of the bottle. But that's not the way it is. The Bible said he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He didn't say that you needed a Cadillac. Oh, amen. He said he'll supply all of your needs according to his riches, not your wants. Amen. How many knows that it's a blessing of God sometimes that he don't give us everything we want? Amen. Amen. Glory. And how did I get on that soapbox? I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Think about this. For the, for, for the last, from the last page of the Old Testament to the first page of the New Testament, there was 400 years of silence. No fresh word from God. Nothing. Now listen to this. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. I got excited when I heard this. 
Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. This is in Malachi. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. What Malachi is prophesying is the coming of the Messiah. He said, suddenly the Messiah is going to show up at the temple. Amen. Glory. So the people have, are waiting for 400 years to get ready for the coming of the Messiah. Amen. And then listen in Luke chapter 2 and verse 22. It says, And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. What did they do? They brought baby Jesus. Hallelujah. And suddenly, glory to God, all of a sudden, amen, he walks in the temple, amen, and they're holding the Messiah, holding that child that was prophesied for 400 years and during that time in between there was no fresh word but the prophecy came right at the last of the Old Testament in the very first of the New Testament it's fulfilled as Jesus Christ amen is brought forth into the temple oh listen saints and then look what it says in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 it says but when the fullness of time was come God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that were that we might receive the adoptions of son hallelujah oh saints it don't matter how long the silence is it don't matter how long it's been since you heard the word from God oh but all you've got to do is just be faithful to what he's given you the last word he's given you the last instruction he's given you the last task that he's given you you just keep on keeping on you stay faithful to that which God has given you and then all of the sudden hallelujah all of the sudden at the appointed time in the timetable of God God will show up all oh, saints of God I want you to know tonight we still serve an on time God or oh, you may think he's late you may think hey man he's not going to show up but at the very moment Amen. That God has foreordained at the time that he knew that you were mature enough, that you were ready enough, that you were able to receive the blessing. All of a sudden, smack, glory to God, and there it is. Hallelujah. Would you give him praise? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Listen, Luke 2 and 13 says, And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Acts 2 and 2 says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Acts chapter 9 says, While Paul was on the road to Damascus, suddenly there shined a light from heaven. When Paul and Silas sang praises at midnight in the middle of the prison. Oh, the Bible said suddenly there was a great earthquake and the chains and the shackles and the doors were open. I want you to know that God will do what he will do and he will do it suddenly. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Our God moves suddenly when it is his appointed time. Oh, we know, glory to God, that the Bible says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I'm not talking about a blink of the eye. A twinkle is a lot faster than a blink. Hey Amen. Glory. I'm talking about 10 milliseconds. Hey Amen. Suddenly, all of a sudden, we're going to be called out of here. Glory to God to be with our Lord and our Savior. So what do we do? What do we do in the middle of the silence? We keep our trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Don't listen to your own understanding. Don't listen to man's logic. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your path. 
He'll direct your path. Oh, listen, when I was in Sheridan, Arkansas, hey, man, when I was in Sheridan, Arkansas, and the Lord said, I'm sending you back to Malvern to pastor. That was, I'm telling you, that was a, that was, what? Hey, man, I had a great church, great people. I'm sending you back to Malvern to pastor. But there was a lot of T's to cross and a lot of I's to be dotted. There was a long path. There was a long wait. Amen. I struggled. Amen. During those times. But I knew, amen, that God was with me because it just seemed like during that path, Kalen, doors were opening. Amen. Miracles were happening. Amen. Things were moving and shaking and things were changing. Amen. And I knew that God was with me. Amen. That he was there, Kayla. And he was bringing it to pass. Glory to God. Amen. I remember, amen, when I got the call. Amen. I got the call to be associate pastor. Amen. I, I prayed about it. Well, the first call I got, I prayed about it. And the Lord said, Wait. Tom, I didn't want to wait. He said, wait. Pastor Roger probably knows a little more about this than some of us. Amen. He said, wait. So I waited. Amen. And about six months later, I don't know if it was that long, the Lord, he spoke and he said, now. Now. So I called Brother Paul and said, the Lord said, now, if you're still interested. And he said, come on. Come on. I knew what God was fixing to do. God was fixing to open the door. Amen. If I would just step through the doors that he opened, that he was going to make a way. Amen. Trust him. Trust him during those times. It could be that you're hearing from God, but you just don't like what you're hearing. Amen. You may be thinking he's silent. But he's just talking up a storm, but you ain't listening because you don't want to hear what he's saying. Amen. I've been there. I've been there. Listen, God always has your best interest at heart. He's got your back. He's your biggest fan. You can trust him. You can trust him. Amen. Job said, though they slay me, yet I will trust him. But I will maintain my uh, own ways before him. Trust Him. Amen. And sometimes we don't hear the voice of God or, or He's silent because He's trying to get our attention. Sometimes He's silent to get us to search our hearts, to get us to watch our lives and to examine our lives. Amen. Listen, Psalm 66 and 8 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Amen. Another translation says it was like, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, my Lord would not have listened to me. So we have to keep our hearts right. Search our hearts for unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, pride, and selfishness. These things will hinder our walk with God and hinder our prayer life and they will hinder our ears to hear what the Lord would say to us. So listen, continue to do what he's given you to do. Continue to be faithful what he's given you to do. Wait in faithfulness for the next season. Continue to sing and to worship the Lord in the time of waiting. Continue to pray and study the word of God and spend time listening and examining your heart. And then all of a sudden, it'll happen. All of a sudden, I believe God. I believe in the Lord. Amen? I believe in His promises. I believe in His precepts. Amen. Just stay faithful. Would you stand tonight? Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for, Lord, this precious word. I pray, O oh God, that you would examine our hearts and our lives. Help us, Lord. Keep us, Lord, pure before you. Lord, we cry out to you and ask you, Lord, to show us any wayward way in our lives. And Lord, let us remain faithful unto that which you have given us to do. Lord, we love you. We praise you. 
and we honor you. Hallelujah. I want to open these altars. Would you come tonight? Let's spend a moment of time, amen, crying out to God here tonight. Would you come? If you need special prayer, amen, in your life, would you come and allow us to pray with you? Amen. Would you come?